All right, guys, so in this video, we talk about the uh, pacemaker cell versus the cardiac myocyte. Um, I try to incorporate, you know, when I taught this in, in, a, in a live lecture before, uh, there's like a, a PowerPoint uh, that it's, it's kind of hard to transition to a video like this, but we give it our best attempt. Um, it's just a way that I learned off someone from YouTube how you can kind of memorize the, uh, or, or a good way to memorize the, um, you know, kind of what goes in and out of the cell for both of these. So um, try doing the questions before I actually answer them. I think the first couple are actually pretty decent and um, hope you like the video. All right, guys, so first question reads, uh, electrodes are used to record the membrane potential changes, the, the membrane potential changes of different cardiac muscle cells. See below. So we have a, a cardiac cell and a pacemaker cell. And we really have to tell the difference between these two. Um, but, bef but before we really get into there, there's really only two real main points, I'd say, that are, that are the real take-homes. But let me show you kind of a, the beginning of a, a quick PowerPoint thing that I did when I was teaching this in a live class and see if this it makes any sense. So you can see this first slide here. That actually shows, you can see it's the heart, so that represents the cardiac, the cardiac cell. And you have three things. In the inside, you have a banana, which represents potassium. On the outside, you got the salt shaker, which is the sodium, and the bone, which is the calcium. So at rest, potassium's on the inside, calcium and sodium are on the outside. And there's a balance between those. But those are your main players when it comes to everything we're going to talk about when it comes to, the, to basically the cell, what's on the inside versus the outside. On the second slide here, you can see... And if you notice, there's just like a little bump. There's not some prolonged plateau. So if, it, if there's just a little bump and no plateau, we know it's a pacemaker cell. And then what's on the inside? Well, you can see there on the inside is going to be the potassium. On the outside, you got the sodium and the calcium. Now, what makes that line go up, and I'll explain this when I draw it out in a second, is when things come in to the inside, it makes the line go up. It goes from that negative 60 up. So what does that? Sodium rushes in right there. And then you can see where the voltage, there's a lightning bolt, the voltage-gated calcium channels open. They come on the inside, which makes the line rise. When things go down on this slide, you can see that it's the potassium that rushes out. So really, there's only three things you got to know for the pacemaker. It's the sodium, the, the calcium, and then the uh, potassium. And so this is a summary slide that shows that sodium comes in, the calcium rushes in, and then the potassium rushes out. And so again, there's a summary slide. And now here's the cardiac myocyte. And you notice there it has the plateau phase. Now that plateau phase is mainly a balance between, as you can see, potassium and calcium. But at the very bottom left, you see where it says there's always potassium leaking out. Then, uh, then okay, there's that slide that shows potassium leaking out. And then it shows the calcium, I'm sorry, the sodium, excuse me, right? It's the sodium that rushes in fast, okay? Sodium rushes in fast, and that's why it's a straight line up. It hits that little top point, and then what happens? The sodium stops, you see the X there, and then potassium starts leaking out and goes down. But then what happens right at this point on this slide? You see there's an equal balance between the potassium leaking out and the, and the calcium uh, coming in, so that creates the plateau phase. And then, of course, the next slide here shows what it shows the potassium leaking out. And so that's the summary right there of the cardiac myocyte, when we need that plateau phase to make things squeeze and push the blood out. Um, so yeah. So now back to the, to the uh, actual question. You can see we get the cardiac cell and then the pacemaker cell. And again, we need this plateau phase because we, just, we need something to squeeze slowly to push the blood out. So if we were to draw this, you know, if we were to draw, let's just say we're at the, and let's do the pacemaker first, okay? Let's do the pacemaker cell. And like that, like we just showed, um, and, but there's two, there's a principle I want you to know first is, and this will make sense in a, in a second. So if we were to draw, you know, some type of um, race car per se, okay? The race car. And what's the race car's number? Sodium, right? Because he's very fast. And then we're going to draw, you know, let's just draw an old person kind of hunched over and they're walking and they're holding their cane. And then, you know, what do we worry about with, with the elderly? It's the bones, right? The calcium. So the calcium, think slow. Sodium, I want you to think fast. It's going to pay off here in just a second. So back to the pacemaker cell. 
We know it's a pacemaker cell. Why? Because in pacemaker cells just have this. They don't have. They do not have a plateau phase. So, again, the pacemaker cell comes in here, and what does that? So you know, we have sodium kind of leaking in. Because remember, at rest, what do we say? At rest, we have what on the inside? Potassium. That represents banana right there. What's on the outside? Calcium and sodium. So as things come in, that makes this line go up because it fill, fills up stuff underneath the curves, how I like to think of it. And so as it goes up here, you see it's kind of a gradual rise. Well, if it's a gradual rise, is that fast or slow? If it's gradual, it's slow. So who's going to do this? Calcium. Okay. And there's that little peak right there. And then as the calcium channels close and they come back down, who goes out of the cell, right? Who's coming out of there? It's going to be potassium, All right? So sodium goes up, then it goes up slow, calcium. And then at any time it comes down, any time it comes down, your only player in this thing for our purposes is going to be potassium. So it's real easy. So really all you have to memorize is who makes them go up. If it goes up slow, it's calcium. If it goes up fast, it's sodium. So let's look at the cardiac cell. Okay. Now the cardiac cell, a little bit different, right? It skyrocketed up all of a sudden. It skyrocketed. So it went up fast. Well, who's on the outside that would have a chance to come in? Well, there's only two things on the outside. It's either calcium or sodium. And it went up fast. And who's our fast player? Sodium. So sodium rushes in. It goes up fast. It hits this peak up here, and then what? The sodium, yeah, the uh, you know, the sodium closes, and then who makes them go down right there? Well, we said the only thing that can make things go down, the only person that can rush out of the cell is going to be potassium. But then they have this. They always like to ask this question. You have this cardiac cell, and it has this as they call it, the plateau phase. And they say, well, who's responsible for that plateau phase? And really, you know, they're going to say, well, that means somebody has to be coming in and somebody has to be going out, technically, right? To make it a smooth transition, a smooth line, it has to be a balance. So who's coming in? Calcium. Who's leaving? Well, it's got to be potassium. So technically, this plateau phase is a balance between calcium and potassium. But the question they usually like to ask is, who's responsible for this? Well, technically, it's both, but the test question usually is looking for calcium as the answer. And then, of course, as it goes down, who's responsible for leaving the cell? We know it's got to be potassium. So that's the basics of knowing either of these. So this question says, movement from which of the following ions or combination of is most responsible at the, at the point marked by the arrow? Well, it's talking right here. We know it's a pacemaker cell, right? Because why? There's no plateau phase. And it goes up gradually. And who, who, makes things, who makes it go up gradually or slow? Calcium. If they ask right here, who makes it go up fast? You say sodium. If they said who's responsible for the for the, this plateau phase, oh, you would say calcium. Technically, it's a balance between who? Calcium and potassium. If they say anything of people going down, you automatically say potassium because he's leaving the cell. Okay? So if you know that, you'll answer any question that they could ask you on the step exam. So in this situation, answer choice C, calcium. Okay? This one says, the graph to the right shows the action potential in a typical nerve cell. Which of the following describes the relationship between permeabilities in the region marked 3? Okay, a little bit different, right? So see what you think. And 3 is right here if you can't see it very well. Is it A, the permeability of calcium is less than the permeability of sodium? Is it B, the permeability of calcium greater than sodium? C, sodium less than potassium? D, sodium and calcium are equal? Or E, sodium greater than potassium? permeability. Okay, so where are we at? We Well, first of all, what kind of cell is this? We know this is pacemaker. Well, how do we know that? Because there's no plateau, right? So if we were just to label this all of a sudden, well, we know in a pacemaker it goes up, you know, it looks pretty steep here. It goes up gradual compared to the, compared to the, uh, the cardiac myocyte. 
And then we know when it goes down, anything that goes down, it's potassium. We know sodium just kind of leaks there. Okay, so that's all we need to know for this. But then they're saying, well, what happens right here? Well, is it calcium greater than less than sodium? It has nothing to do with it. We're talking potassium here, so it has nothing to do with him. Uh, calcium greater than sodium, again, nothing to do with him. Is it sodium less than potassium? Okay. Who's rushing out right here? Who, who's doing all the work? Potassium. Is sodium doing anything? Not so much. So maybe, okay? Sodium equal to calcium? Again, we're talking about two guys that aren't even in play here. Or is it sodium greater than potassium? Again, who's doing all the work? Who's rushing out? Potassium. He's doing it all. So in this situation, you wish they would have put an answer potassium greater than something, but they didn't. They weren't that nice, or I wasn't that nice. So the correct answer is sodium less than the permeability of potassium. It's a good question because um, it makes you understand, do you, do you know who's doing all the work where? And then you can put it in a, in a secondary question saying, well, where is potassium? It should be the biggest. Well, it is the biggest. It's just they're saying sodium's less than him. Okay, correct answer is C. This one. During an experimental study for the understanding of nerve conduction, a researcher isolates a nerve and uses a microelectrode to measure the membrane potential distal to the site of electrical stimulation. The resting mem membrane potential is found to be negative 90. The below chart reveals membrane potentials recorded at various points after, st after uh, stimulant. Stimulate. Um, so at zero time, it's negative 90. 0.5, it's 25, and then back to negative 100. So to me, this is very confusing. The change of membrane potential from the resting potential occurring between 0.5 and 1 milliseconds is most likely caused by who? Okay, and I have all my guys down here. Okay? Then they're asking between 0.5 and 1. So they're saying between this to this. Now, if I didn't know anything from this, I, I always go back to any question. I say, well, what do I know? Well, I know that worst case scenario, even though they're not telling me it's the heart, I know that in the cell, in, in the center, in the inside at normal, I should have banana, which is potassium. On the outside, I should have my salt shaker, which is going to be my sodium. And, my, and usually on the pictures, I had a bone, which would be my calcium. So I know that's what it is at rest. And then in this little deal, first, um, if I just drew a line here and called that zero, if he was at negative 90 down here and started, he goes to 25, we'll say that's there, and then he goes down to negative 100 there, and then back up to negative 90 there. All right? So they're asking between, between here to negative 100, what happened? Who's responsible for this? Now, just knowing that my main players are these guys, you know, I'm looking, I'm really looking at those, of course, of course, so that means I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get rid of all my distractors. Who's responsible for between going from 25 to a negative 100 in this situation? It's gonna be, you guessed it, potassium. Okay? Uh, so, uh, again, this was pretty much a question, uh, pretty pretty much stolen from one of the old NBME style uh, questions. And now the last one. It says the resting membrane potential for an isolated muscle cell is negative 70. Equilibrium potentials uh, for, for important ions are as follows. And it gives us these. Sodium here, potassium, chloride, and calcium. Okay. Which of the following most likely forms the resting membrane potential of the cell? Now again, when I see this, I get, you know, from, from my level of understanding, I just get confused. But then I always go back to what do I know? I know in a cell that I have potassium. Again, this should be a banana, it's not a very good one. I should have potassium on the inside, calcium, and sodium on the outside. So to create a balance, there's got to be some type of interaction um, between these guys, right? And keeps that keeps keeps it kind of going where the way it should. So when I look at my answer choices, you know, this thing about chloride, you know, it, it doesn't have a very compelling argument because I know these are my basics. And again, for me on step one, I'm just gonna always go back to if if I get confused on a question, there's something in there that I do know, and for me it's this. 
So I automatically eliminate anything that has that's not part of my big players. So then it comes down to is it is the resting membrane potential because of the high potassium conductance? Is this the guy working all by himself to make to make this stay in balance? Or would it be high potassium conductance and some sodium conductance? <clears throat> now, if I had to choose between the two, right, without really analyzing all this stuff, um, if I had to choose between two, would it be just because one guy creating a balance, or would it be a balance between two things? And you guessed it, it's going to be a balance between two. Now, again, there's a better, there could be a technical way you could do this, and I'd say more power to you on it. You know, my goal with, with creating this, this kind of video is to say this is, this is kind of the method that I use to get through this. Uh, that first PowerPoint works a lot better if someone does it, does it in person because you can kind of draw on it and, and, and you really use the salt shaker, the bone, and the, and the banana. But know that sodium's fast, calcium's slow. The myocyte has a plateau phase that's responsible because of the calcium. Sodium rushes in fast, calcium goes in slow. Okay, guys? Hope this was helpful.